Moses in the, in chapter three we we saw where he was working because he was tending to his his father-in-law's sheep, and and when God called him, God told him what to do, and Moses had to do it to be obedient. In in, in John nine at four, Jesus Christ Himself came. My God, heavy at work, He says, "I must work the work of Him that sent me." My God, what it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. He says, "I must work the works." And if Jesus see the sepulchre, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angels, and here we have seen that even the angels were at work. The angels of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. So the angels were working even then. Praise God. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. They were unconscious. And the angels, the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Praise God. He says, He is not here, for He is risen. Meaning, He got up. As He said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And the servant, and go quickly and tell His disciples that He is risen. Jesus is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. In verse 8, action. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples word. I am here to tell somebody today. That you can get up. You can get up. We have the blind man. For 30 years. Stricken. By palsy. Jesus Christ. Told the man. Something. Very significant. Take up your bed. We are living in a time where, especially for Christians now, we get so complacent. And in order for something to happen, we must do something. If we need Christ, Jesus Christ is omnipresent, he's already here. If we need Christ in our lives, we must do something. We must seek, seek him. Jesus Demonstrate that he got up from the dead, and we must do something. Isaiah 55 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he can be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he shall abundantly my God Almighty he shall abundantly pardon large quantities Plentifully, and that's how God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. We're sitting in our sinful states, but yet we still want the blessings of God to move upon our lives. 
move towards God because God is calling us for a nation. I've never seen a time, and this is good because the Bible declares that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I've never seen a time now where more people are praying, but I still question are we really praying from our hearts, really? Or are we just, just praying because we are afraid? God himself is in control of everything. God knows our hearts. David says he knows our thoughts from afar off. You know those that are his, the Bible declares that. And if we think we can bribe God by our two minutes prayer. And everybody's sending out videos, people praying all over, singing all over. Where were you before now? I wonder if everyone was praying and turning and seeking if we would be at the place that we are today. I, I wonder really if everybody was really doing something. I've never seen a time now where prophets are prophesying. But Jesus declares that, that in the last days, false prophet will rise up among us. And if we're not careful, brethren, even those that are saved will be taken towards it. But I am going back on the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we must be careful of the false prophet. We must do something at this present time. Nobody knows what tomorrow brings. I have seen and even know sometimes, Lord God, even this morning I was saying, question because I have heard of even people, pastors who uh, had the, the disease, past bishop's wife passed from this disease and, I, and, I, and I'm looking in between and I'm saying, then God and who then shall be safe? But the Lord backed me up. I said, listen, there are still some people who are Preaching Christ, and they're still not at the place that they ought to be. And some of us do not want to take correction. It is very sad that you cannot preach repentance message no more. And that is where we are now. Because the enemy has come up with all kind of strategy for us to, to shut us up. So now, if you start to make, to correct somebody on their lifestyle, all you can hear that we're judging. We're judging. And I'm glad Jesus Christ declared that, that. He says, I didn't come to judge. But I come to do the work of my father. And so, we cannot let the world intimidate us by preaching the word of God. How is it possible that we're sitting in the seat of sin and I must just touch you on the shoulder and pat you on the shoulder and I'm telling you to get up? We must do something. It is a requirement for us. First Peter said that we should repent. And it did not say some of us. He says all of us must repent. Because in a time like this, and that scripture in 2 Chronicle uh, 7, uh, 14. We have been uh, preaching that scripture for years. Nobody saw it. But now even sinners are saying it. But I believe that they have missed out on, on, on the most important thing. Because all we can hear now is if my people, which are called by my name, would pray. So because of that, everybody's praying. But if I would go back to the 14th uh, verse, where God says, if I shut up heaven, and there be no rain, since we want to go there, 
And my question is, are we humbling ourselves to the call of God? Oh, God Almighty Jesus. And I humble me so having or showing a modest or low estimate of one's own importance. And he says, if my people would pray, and, and, and a lot of us, we already know what prayer is. Jesus. He said, if we should seek, and that see me attempt to find something, or attempt to desire to obtain or achieve, are we, are we seeking God for our lives today? Jesus, Jesus. And he says, and uh, turn, I turn from what? What am I turning from? From my wicked ways. And that turn means a change of position. Some of us don't want to turn from our wicked ways. But we're expecting God to heal our land. And now, my God Almighty, I've seen all kind of, of, of people praying, but not turning and seeking. You know the life that you're living. I am not standing here and telling you that I got it all together. But thank God I am seeking and I am humbling myself and turn from my wicked. I am examining myself. I can't do it for you. Jesus Christ got up out of the grave, the dark, my God Almighty, place of hell. Jonah says, I was in the belly of hell. Jonah made the effort. My God, that sees on a heart from in the belly of the wind. Jonah wanted to get out. He knew he had to do something. He said, in the belly of the of hell, he cried out to God. So we cannot sit in our sin and feel good about it. We must get up and do something. There is no way that we can continue like this. My God, you think God would just get up and just turn the plane on. There was something that was happening down in Egypt. Something that's disturbed God. God says, I have to act. We're no different now, brethren. This is Resurrection Sunday. The churches are quiet. It's like Jesus, the tomb is still closed. Jesus. But thank God he rose. He rose triumphant. Jesus, he rose for you and I. We still have chance, I believe. Praise God. I believe that Jesus Christ, his arms is still open and saying, I am just waiting on somebody to get up. Oh, Jesus, you, after four days, Lazarus laid in the grave. Dead for four days. Jesus went to the tomb and he cried out, Lazarus. Jesus, Lazarus. And I'm crying out to somebody today to get up from the state of deadness where you are. For too long we have been sitting and thinking that we can really bright God. It is about time that we hear the master's call. Because let me tell you this, it won't be very long before the book will be closed. And then when that book is closed, your tears will not move God. I heard in Jeremiah 7. Let me run there for a little bit. Jeremiah 7. You have it go with me. Praise God. There were some things that my God Almighty 
Praise God. The word of the Lord, what, verse 1, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, It's not just today God is calling to people. It's not just, it's not just no. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim here this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, and enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Now, Judah was Jacob's descendant, Jacob's son. And God had already pronounced blessing on them. And Judah, Judah, Judah walked away from the presence of God. And God sent out a letter there, he says. Thus said the Lord in the third verse. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. He said, amend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. God never destroy a city without warning. My God Almighty. God never destroy a city without warning. He said down to Sodom and Gomorrah. So warn those people for me. Jesus, Jesus. I got but in fourth verse trust ye not in line words. Saying the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, uh -huh, he was outlining something. He said, If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed no innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to hurt, to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell, meaning to live in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever. In, in, in chapter 6, praise God. In Jeremiah chapter 6, and verse 16. The Lord sent out a word to them. He said, stand ye in the ways and see uh, and ask for the old paths. These are action words. These are something, brethren, that we all must do. My God. He says, ask for the old paths. We could not have gotten it any clearer. Where, the good way, where is the good way and walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But listen what they said. They said we will not walk. We have seen for years. The word of God has been going out clearly. And I honestly believe that. The Bible is closing out nowhere in the last days. Why do I say that? Praise God. We have seen all the signs already. We have seen signs and wonders. Now is a time for God's people to get up. Get up, rise to the call of God. Then to Isaiah said, ask a question. And this is one of the questions. He says, is there no balm in Gilead? Jesus. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician? Why then is not the health of my daughter or my people recovered? That if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble them. And pray and seek God and turn from our wicked ways. Abraham, 
Say, God, if you find 40 people, will you save it? Six, ten, five. And he stopped there. Brethren, we're in a time where this is not a game thing. People are taking salvation too lightly. Do we know the cost? Do we know the price that Jesus Christ paid for us? Do we know the cost? My God, where Isaiah saw it, Jesus, Jesus, he was wounded and bruised. Do we know the price that he paid just for you and I? We don't have to we don't have to go there. We don't have to be crucified. Because Jesus Christ paid the price. He got up. He got up. He got up. And we must get up. We must do our part. Brethren, we must play our part. The Bible is there as our instruction. This book has never come alive in my spirit. Oh my God, until I started really to take note of it, every word is action in this book. And we must do something. The blind Bartimaeus, had he not cried out, he probably would not have gotten his healing. He cried out, he did something, he cried out. And so if we really want God to intervene, brethren, we have to cry out for him. Individually, we have to cry out to God. David says, I cried out. And because I cried out, God heard me and he saved me. But we don't want to do anything. But we want to expect to go to heaven riding. My God Almighty, that evil Jesus triumphant through Jerusalem. He sent for the donkey. He must do something. So God are the days, brethren, when the words of each ears can it's not going to see us. God are those days where in the last days no, where is either we're going to be seen and our Joshua when he called the children of Israel and his last final statement, my God, he declared unto them, he showed them how God delivered them from the children from, from Egypt bondage. He declared unto them the good thing that God has done unto them. Oh, we part the Red Sea. Oh, we see of them, my God Almighty. And he says, no, when if God be God, serve him. That's right. He declares that to the children of Israel. They listen carefully. And this is what our downfall is. We listen. And at this very moment, we said, yes, this we will do. But tomorrow, we go back to our own ways. And this is what is happening. Many people are praying. But we're going back to our own lifestyle. God is not pleased. God is not pleased. He's not pleased. So Joshua called them. And he said, let me tell you something. His last farewell speech. Joshua said. Is either. You're going to serve the God that your father served on the other side. Are you going to serve the God that I'm telling you about? And that you have experienced. He says, Joshua says, but one thing I want you to do to choose this day whom you will serve. Chose you this day. You have to do something. Chose whom you will serve. But Joshua says, I chose. My really he says, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Brethren, it is not God's will or wish that any one of us should perish. He says, I am come that you might have life. You may not hear another a message preach. You may not hear another repentance message preach. But it is time for somebody to make a choice. 
That it's time for somebody to do something today. Choose this day whom you will serve. Lazarus got up from the grave. Jesus, Jesus. And I am speaking to some Lazarus who are sitting down to get up. Because the death angel is going over. It's no telling when it's going to stop. Jesus, arm yourself with the blood. Jesus. Be ready. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Be ready. I don't know what else. What else to say? I don't know. It's like mm. preachers are running out of words. Right. Jesus. That's right. Preachers are running out of words. Oh, no, right. We are repeating the same thing over. Lord God, of nobody will take heed. They say, it. yes, we will. Yes, we will. We get hype up for today. But tomorrow we fall back into the same old lifestyle. Jesus says, he says, they said we will not do it. For here God is calling. Jesus is calling today. Jesus, will you hear his call? Will you hear the voice of Jesus Christ saying, come? The Bible says that on the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up. It was a great multitude. It was a mixed multitude. And he great got up and he said, if any man thirst, then it come. We must do something. He said, if any man thirst, let it come. Jesus. We must do something, brethren. Jesus, he wept over Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jesus, he suffered. He suffered the hands. Oh my God, of his people. All because preaching Christ. He said, I came to my own. My own did not receive me. Jesus Christ modeled that life throughout. My God, his years of ministry. He knew his destiny. He knew that he was going to suffer. But he did it anyway. He got up. He came from heaven. The songwriter said he left the splendor of heaven. Knowing his destiny. He knew that he was going to be a hard, rough road. But Jesus says, I must do something to save Adam Fallen. Through one man, sin came into this world and all died. Through one man, all if we can live. First fruit, that died and rose again. Jesus, Jesus. So I appeal today to somebody to get up. No, it's not the time to try to debate the word of God. Because sometimes when we find ourselves locked up in the sin and when the word go forth and hit you, we're trying to find something to debate. It's not time to debate now. It is time to receive Christ. Jesus. It is time to receive the word of God. Because if God said it, it must be done. Somebody told me that baptism is not important. Really? It is important. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So for us who sit down and believe that we can just get up. You think you can just get up and walk into the professor and he give you a certificate for your doctorate or whatever. You have to study to get it. And then do your exam. And we better make sure you pass the state board. So how could it that God's salvation could just be so loose? That everybody just walk in and just get your certificate and, and you're on your way to heaven. We got to do something. We got to work and this work is not easy. 
You think God, as much as God be God sitting upon the throne, the Bible says he worked. Because in order for Adam to come and I got to do some energy on Adam. All I am saying to you this, this afternoon is to repent that's all. That's it. Seek God. Turn from the wicked ways. My God Almighty, this sin, this sin that is up on the face of this earth, it is up into God's nostril. We can push it under the carpet. We can wash it. The evidence is still there. Because I know God said to Abraham, yet if I find ten people, I will save the city. Something is happening. Something is happening. But I dare you, for those who are holding on to God, hang tight. Let us examine ourselves day by day. And let us stay close to God. Because he promised the full assurance in Psalm 93, 91. He that dwelleth. Some of us only want to push our head in one minute and take it back out. But the Bible says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide. He says he will give his angels charge over us to keep us. In Deuteronomy 6, I believe he says that none of these diseases shall be upon you. He says, I will take them and put them upon fear. And the children of Egypt will be slain by this plague. Jesus, so I believe, brethren, let us see God and know the things that God loves. I dwell there. And I honestly believe this is what I believe. And nobody can take that belief away from me. That if we tuck ourselves into the cares of God, we can relax, relax in his heart. Because we are safe and secure. Nobody would whoop a child if that child has done nothing wrong. And I honestly believe that God will not allow his people to perish. With the wicked. We know we have to go. Lazarus was dead. And that he rose from the dead. Yes, he died again. Praise God. Yeah, but not at that time. Glory to God. Jesus Christ is the first fruit that died and rose and lived forever. I honestly believe, children of God, listen to me. Let us pay close attention to God. Let us not provoke God, but walk in the right path. Tell Isaiah, tell them to search, seek for the old path. And walk therein. If you are not sure where you are, please find somebody who can relate the word of God to you? Jesus. Don't just sit and assume that you're okay because we know when we're not right with God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If there is a bomb in Gilead, then why? Then it's not the health. Of the daughter of my people recovered. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call upon him while he is there. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Yeah, hey, God Almighty. And let us turn to God softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling for you and for me. Jesus is beckoning to us to come. I don't know about you, but every man has to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. And my prayer, like Paul says that his prayer is to see Israel saved, my prayer is to see 
Everybody, save and make it up to heaven. So what happened? If we hear the trumpet sound today, everybody's alert about that virus that we can't see. Praise God. And somebody, they're asking, and, and, and I know somebody who said, told his friend that, I can't see God, you're my God. But we know that there is a God. Yes. And we can't see him. Back in the days, I believe that those witnesses were more privileged than us because they have Jesus walking with them. We were not there. We have not witnessed that. But we believe because of what we have seen. And Jesus said it, that we are even more blessed because we believe and not see now. I pray that the heart of every person will be open today and to see that God is calling. I pray for every ears to open spiritually that we can hear the voice of God. Because whether we believe it or not, there is coming a day, brethren, when we all shall stand before the judgment bar. When our numbers call, will we make it to heaven? Or will we make it to hell? Nobody wants to preach about hell. But it is real. But I'm saying today that you can get up. Get up from where you are. Get up out of your sinful lifestyle. And let us turn our hearts to Jesus. And serve him. Because no more will he repeat death. Once and for all, he died. So brethren, let us turn our hearts to God today. Forsake our unrighteous ways. And cling to Jesus. You shall be saved. God bless.